What's going on guys, GTRX6 here, back for another Transformers review, and today we're taking a look at MP47 Hound. Uh, this is kind of fresh into my hands, and uh, yeah, I mean obviously it's Hound, and I really... I like the Jeep mode. It's small. It definitely reminds me of the Willys Jeep that it's intended to be. I think it's fun. It does a lot of really cool things. Before we get too far though, let's talk accessories. Uh, so it comes with this translucent spike, which you can just slide right in here. Uh, no articulation on this guy. He's just intended to look like that holographic driver that you saw Hound have occasionally. Um, and he's big. You've also got this other Spike. Now I know people were saying they remade Spike and he's just out of scale with the other MP figures. And I would say, and this is the one that came with uh, Bumblebee I believe, this is actually out of scale with MP. This is actually more accurate. Um, if you were to go stand next to a Jeep, I think he's actually still a bit too small for the Jeep. Um, but as a human being, you certainly aren't, I mean, like, my son maybe comes up to this part on the tire. You know, as an adult, it's not that way. Um, let's just bring it out right away. Like, here's here's MP Blue Streak. Like, go stand out next to your car, and if, I mean, unless you are a very short person, most people come up over the roof of their car, so... That is way more appropriate of a scale. Now I'm gonna still say I'm really disappointed in it because here's a scale that's like, what, three times bigger, probably two times bigger than this guy and you still couldn't give us any face. So that lack of face paint's really disappointing because we've seen other companies such as Dr. Wu bring these size figures to us before and you get full face paint. It just, it still doesn't end up feeling like uh, spike here because it's just you know there's just no character they they could have gone that extra step and i wish they did the articulation is almost the exact same as the uh mp the smaller mp version except that you got elbow joints now um and the waist swivel is a little bit nicer you do have this big uh honking pin in the back here that is not present here so I kind of wonder what that's holding together, but I think he's fine. If you're of the crew that think that he's out of scale, uh, then I just don't think you actually understand how a human scales with a vehicle. He also comes with his hologram gun and a really nice effect part that you can plug on in and boom, you're making the actual hologram. It looks great if you're a type of person who does dioramas and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a really cool accessory. He also comes with two faces. We've got the kind of yelling face, and we've got the not quite as serious and stern face. I'm not sure which one of these I necessarily think is better, but let me just point out one thing that really strikes me is he's got no forehead here, and I do think that this ends up being an issue in his robot mode. And finally, there's that key to Ravage's cage from that one episode. Uh, and I'll show this off in robot mode because they were considerate and gave us a little place for it. And one of the accessories they include is this lovely soft top here, which uh, a friend of mine said they included it because Jeep made them. But uh, according to the instruction manual, it is one of those things that showed up that one episode that one time. And I will say, I feel like it should fit a little bit better than it fits on mine. Like, I feel... Like it should move, see this little gap here? I think it should be a little more forward, but it is lined up in the crease there uh, on both sides. I do find it a little bit difficult to get the, the soft top on the Jeep. Um, I don't know, maybe that is right, but it just kind of feels a little bit wrong. Uh, but I do love the soft top probably more than I really should. Um, I think if I do keep this hound in his vehicle mode, I'm probably keeping the soft top on, to be honest, because I, I kind of think it's cool looking on this guy. Another interesting feature of the soft top is it's intended to be kind of like a shield in robot mode, but it also does store his other accessories. <clears throat> also for accessories, we got two replacement mirrors that look exactly the same as these that have left them in the box. We've got this gun here, uh, which does swivel around and such to be the cannon on the back, uh, the gas can, and the other tire. 
Now I will say, the way it folds up and stuff, it's really, it's pretty neat, but I can't deny that it is a little bit visually distracting in the vehicle mode to see all these uh, cuts in the rim. Um, the same goes for this back tire. It's very cool how they got the engineering to work, but still distracting. So real quick, here is probably the biggest competitor, uh, to me at least, this is the Fans Toys Willis. Um, and I do think that Hound nails the Willys Jeep a little better than the Fans Toys one does. Uh, but still the Fans Toys one is maybe a little more visually interesting. I know the Willys Jeep is a pretty small Jeep overall. The Fans Toys one almost feels like a Jeep Wrangler, you know, Willys edition. Uh, whereas this one actually feels like a Willys Jeep to me. Um, but I do think that the Fans Toys one comes off as more premium with the die cast and the rubber wheels uh, than the plastic stuff. And you can see here, like, if you kind of miss something in the transformation or don't squeeze it quite right, uh, it's very disjointed here when you can see right through the wheel on the back. And just another comparison, here is MP44 Optimus in his vehicle mode. And for you old school MP collectors, here he is next to Blue Streak here. Uh, I think the size looks appropriate for a Willys Jeep next to a Datsun. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen one in person. Um, but I do feel like it's closer to the car size. Uh, then this Jeep ends up being. And another additional thing they have here is you can open the hood. You can see Hound's little face here, just a little. Um, it's hidden pretty well. You can kind of push it up to let that little piece of engine block hide it. And then these do kind of end up looking like little air intakes. I'm sure you can't tell that that's his arms. So one thing I want to point out, maybe you guys can help me, there's these little gray panels and I can't seem to see them anywhere in the instructions. And I've transformed him to robot mode and back once and I don't remember moving these panels, and then I saw them, I'm like, where are they supposed to be? So if I have these in the wrong place, please let me know, because I just am not sure where the instructions want them to be. Looking inside, we do have some nice little details on the uh, Jeep. We got, like, your radio and all the dials picked out with paint. Uh, a little bit boring, because it's just kind of one color, but... You know, the extra little detail doesn't go unnoticed. So one thing that I think is ultra cool about this guy compared to the Fans Toys one is all these accessories can transform into the vehicle so you can store the tire, the gas can, and the gun here uh, while still having this uh, shoulder cannon here, which I think that is super cool. Uh, that said, I do think it's easier to take this and this off ahead of time and then we'll actually store them away when we get to the part of the legs where we're going to use them. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get this guy into his robot mode here. And the instructions kind of tell us to lift the seats, which is a little difficult to get your finger in, but ultimately they don't really peg in in such a way that it's that difficult. Uh, and that'll let this whole front end come up. This is pegged in down here. We can also take these seats and fold in the headrests and we'll go ahead and unclip this back section and that is all the stuff that kind of pegs the legs in together. From here, we're going to fold this a little. We're going to fold this panel all the way out on both sides. and kind of drop the seat down here and this piece should come all the way out to the side. So again, drop the seat. This piece is gonna come over it and open up. Now once you have this open up, I like to take this whole piece and bring it down just to get it all out of the way. You can finish folding the seat up and we can take this gas can and you need it to be as pushed in as it possibly can be and turned in like that. From here this is where you can bring this little piece around to the other side. This is this cannon. So what they want you to do with this cannon and you can see which way it's going to plug in it's got to fold down all the way around 
like this and then basically it's going to sit in there like so. So this is just why I think it's easier. It's really hard to manipulate the pieces of this cannon while it's on that little post. And this is really why I think that it's best to go ahead and do all this with the gun just off because you can get everything all straight and how it's supposed to look like this without actually working on that little tiny peg. I just think that that is something that is a potential break here. Um, but you can see once it's in place, I mean it's kind of hard to see, but I mean everything kind of just, just fits. Um, and then you should be able to close that up, bring this down, and then this little gray piece kind of swivels down the rest of the way and locks the foot in place. So you should have his one foot done looking like this. Um, and then this actually you have to be careful because you see this little tab here. It actually does lock the material on this side. So make sure it only twists one way. If you twist it the other way, there's a good chance you end up breaking it. So with that done, let's go ahead. We're going to open this up. Uh, we're going to take this tire and we're going to kind of pull it all the way open here. And then that's actually going to let these edges fold in like so and then bring that in and then you're going to take the other edge uh, which we've already pulled out and fold that in which is a really cool way to hide the tire if you ask me and then that's going to close down and then this panel that we worked with originally comes down here and locks into place making a complete leg and we can go ahead and rock the foot back in place to make it look nicer. So now we're gonna work on the second side here. So we got this all the way open. We're gonna again bring this down, almost the same exact thing. Go ahead, bring that foot up in place. And this is where we can take this piece here. And this tire does pretty well the same thing uh, like this. And then you can go ahead and attach it back to the back of the Jeep. So when you attach this tire back, you'll know it's the right way because this is the bumper of the Jeep and you just want it to all fold in like this. This one's a little easier to work with than the gun, if you ask me, but still, it's just easiest to do it all when it's disconnected. So the tire fits in there, nice and simple. Close that up. It's a lot easier to work with the tire's side then the gun side because there's a little more room with less things to go in there and once again the little black clip comes down and kind of pegs all of this stuff in position make sure you see where the material meets the stop and flip it around the opposite way and it only goes so far before it meets another stop again um, so just be careful you don't want to end up breaking your toy for a silly reason like that right so with this in place, we're going to go ahead, open this guy on up. Again, take our wheel, split it as best we can, fold one half in, fold the wheel in place. Hopefully we didn't push the other side in in the process, and then fold that wheel in place. Bring the back door down here, like so and then bring the side door down. And there we go. We got legs for hound. So adjusting the camera to the top, uh, we're gonna take these pieces, kinda fold them around like so. I believe it's like that. Um, we're gonna take this, fold this whole thing out for now. And we'll take the arms. Actually, and see, here's these little gray pieces that I said I don't quite understand. They're on this this piece here, and I just, I'm not sure if I necessarily understand where they're supposed to go. Um, so if you do understand, please let me know, because, again, I don't see it. But anyway, with that in place, we can actually go ahead and lift the whole head assembly out, which I think is useful. It gives us some extra room to work with here. 
we're gonna take these assemblies, actually, I'm sorry, let's take these mirrors and pop them up and out of the way. They're just on this little swivelly joint down here. I'm bringing the mirror in and kind of work it out of here. Um, it does get a little bit stuck between the body and this fender, but it's not really that big of a deal. From here, now we can take the arms all the way out of this guy. And you can see he's got plenty of range of articulation here. And when you get to about here, I do find that it all kind of ends up getting a little stuck. Um, but you give it a little more push, and I'm not sure what causes it, but there is a piece, I think it's these two corners kind of catch uh, and lock in place, but that at least gets the arms in position. And I believe at this point the instructions do tell you to put these pieces up, which just further make me not really understand what they're there for. Oh well. So with all this kind of hollowed out, we can actually take the tires and close them in place. Uh, we're going to come around to the front here. And flip these little kind of decorative chest pieces in place here. We're going to take the tire, or the, the steering wheel, it's going to stay like that. And we're going to take these pieces and fold them in like this. That's going to let all that kind of fit in here. And you're going to see the front of the Jeep kind of comes down in place here. Now when it is in this position, it is a little bit tricky. Um, I can show you by taking this out that this kind of comes in there and plugs into the side there. Uh, let's see if we can actually do this without this being in place. And we're going to do it again this side. You can see we're plugging the backs of the wheels in this side here. Does this still work? Okay, yeah, that still works. So that's nice. And make sure you secure that properly. Sorry, I forgot to put the steering wheel down here before I close this up. And that makes a world of difference here. Um, and then what that does is gives us the space to actually bring the windshield down, which sits against the black and this piece up. Now in a lot of pictures, there was a big gap between Prowl's head and the hood. Uh, it's not as bad on mine, but it's definitely, I would be lying if I said it wasn't there. So take that, you know, if that, if that gap bothers you, um, you probably should consider that. So with that in place, we're gonna go ahead, rotate the arms around. So his elbows are the right way with the kind of pad on the back. There is a little piece of plastic here to get your finger under to pull out his hands and twist that into the right position. And we'll do that again on this side. There we go. Go ahead and clean up the elbow and the hand. Now he always has this little rocket launcher on his back. I think it's pretty interesting how they actually engineered it to swivel into place. You kind of rotate this piece around and then that plugs into there. And then once you have that in place, whoops, other way, we drop this piece down, we drop this piece down, which kind of forms the rocket launcher. Then the little back piece swivels up and the little top piece swivels up. And I think it's cool that they put it into the robot mode. But I don't necessarily love the armature being present. And it may not bother you, but it is something that kind of bothers me. But regardless how you feel, we've now got our Hound in his robot mode. So in robot mode, what really can I say about Hound but that he's again one of those hyper cartoon accurate looking versions of the character. Uh, he's a very action figure that you can get a lot of posability to get things to kind of move in those like that amazing Yamaguchi type way where from certain angles it's terrible but it really helps from other angles uh, sell the character in a certain pose. 
Um, so articulation, he's fine. Uh, ultimately, I think if you are someone who is going for that hyper cartoon accurate, I mean, there's really no comparison out there. He's going to beat your your make toys. He's going to beat your fans' toys. So you know that's all subjective. It depends where your your collection goes. Now again, I already mentioned I don't really care for the armature. And I've heard people say that, like, you know, if you really push this down, it makes a difference, and it really doesn't. Like, you can see that gap there. Like, that is probably as little as it gets. Uh, and I'm not gonna, you know, lie, it does bother me. His head is floating. Uh, I do wish there was some kind of peg somewhere back here that, like, clipped into place, but there is absolutely nothing that ends up. Like, I'll push it down real hard, and it's still gonna just pop right back up and that bothers me the next thing that bothers me and you may be seeing it is you can actually see right through his head and it's as a result of them putting that extra little face mask gimmick on him now the fans toys you just clipped a face mask in this one has a whole assembly uh, which I just feel totally detracts from the figure you've got three different pins in here I don't I don't like it I really don't and the fact that I can just see through here kind of bothers me more than it probably should. Now remember the small forehead I had mentioned? Now this is not a shadow of his his helmet. Like there is nothing there. So when you're looking at him dead on, to me it looks strange because either the green doesn't come down enough or the forehead doesn't go up enough and you're just left with a hole that I really, I don't, I don't like it. Um, and again, it is that really tiny forehead here. Bring it down and I mean you're seeing right through it. Maybe that's nitpicking, but this stuff is the stuff that really stood out to me that went, I don't know if I like this figure as much as I feel like I should. The feet proportions here, uh, I don't think that the feet necessarily look great. Like this looks like it extends out just awkwardly far um, so that from this front angle, that feels, it feels wrong to me. Um, maybe you disagree, but I don't, I don't necessarily feel like it feels right. But that's about it for my nitpicks on this guy. So I do want to bring in the Fans Toys one again so we can take a look at him next to him. Now, the Fans Toys one's certainly not without flaw. He's got these big old heavy feet that are on this really ridiculous uh, pinned portion here that just... I don't think I've ever seen one that's actually tight, um, but on a shelf, it really isn't much of a problem. Uh, mine's never fallen over. He looks just fine. So this kind of, you know, it kind of questions now he wants to fall over, right? Like he wasn't doing it before, but now that I'm saying he doesn't fall over, he's going to fall over. Anyway, this kind of, this is where it's completely subjective. I still think the Fans Toys one's more interesting to look at versus the old MP aesthetic. I think that this guy is the better choice compared to this guy. Like when you sit him next to your side swipe, your prowls, they have the metallic faces, not these gray faces. Next to your Infernos, your new Bumblebee, your MP44 Prime, this guy is going to win. So. You know, it kind of depends what you want to do with your, your shelf. So for some comparisons, here's the MP Sideswipe. And again, I feel like that bigger bulkiness, uh, which is not really cartoon accurate, ends up kind of working with this guy. Um, but when you kind of, and this this maybe treads the line a little, it's the uh, Magic Square Optimus Prime, which to me feels very animated, but at the same time not really animated. And then here is Bumblebee. So kind of take your pick there on what you're doing with your collection and where you think he goes. I think the scale on either of these guys works. Hound is about the size of an MP car. Actually, maybe he's a little bit small compared to an MP car. I would have to see that Sunbow scale chart to see where I think he kind of feels. But again, that's always all over the place. So you probably could get away with either. For me, in my collection, I still think the Fans Toys one kind of fits that overall aesthetic a little better. I really dig the little accessory that is the hologram projector gun. Uh, I'm making a little Ultra Magnus here. Uh, I love the little special effect that they added onto it. Holding it is your standard MP fair, and you can see like that's kind of some ridiculous uh, 
range of motion he has. Um, the thumb is separate, articulated from the rest of the fingers. Pretty nice. So from what the instructions tell us, we also can store this pistol kind of like a side swipe. You take that off and you fold this and they tell you to take the back here, open this side up and open this up. And then again for this side, over here and up here. So with these open, supposedly, we can store this. From what the instructions say, and maybe I don't know what the best way to get that is, is we can put this piece, and that's a tough fit in there, but what the instructions are telling us is that that little peg in there, which you probably barely can see, is supposed to accommodate this. It'll be interesting to see if this is something we can leave in here. I actually didn't even realize you could put this in here. Um, but we'll see if we can leave this in here when we go back to his Jeep mode. So there we go. We'll put it in that way and close this up. If that's able to stay in there in Jeep mode, that is definitely a huge plus because that's something that I struggle with with the Fans Toys Hound is that I have no place to put the gas canister in robot mode and you know I got a ton of accessories on the back of him in his Jeep mode so you know I do like being able to store this away. So it's interesting because I struggled to get this one in and I didn't even realize that this actually does swivel all the way out like that. Um, it's not, it wasn't clear that it did that from the instructions. Uh, I felt that it kind of moved a little, but basically they're telling us that we take this piece and it looks like we kind of put it in here somehow. Okay, so taking a look at the instructions a little more, it seems like you fold it as much as you can and it kind of fits like that and then we should be able to rotate that back in place and then that should all still be able to come down like so. And then this should close up. So that is very cool. And the fact that you can store the weapons in the robot mode, that's really awesome. Like every single accessory kind of has a place to go. And I applaud Takara for that. So let's work on getting this guy back to his Jeep mode and let's see if we can keep these weapons in place when we get there um, so we can uh, store them too because I think that would be super cool if we can do that. So we're going to go ahead and undo this. Uh, I just like to do this all the way right from the beginning because why not? There we go. And I can never remember which way this goes until we get there, but we don't really need to worry about that. We'll flip that all the way around. So it should be kind of like this, and that's going to flip around when we're ready. So we're going to go ahead and open this up, and we'll go ahead and unpeg these sides. And we're going to lift the Jeep out just so we don't forget anything. We're going to go ahead and rotate these things back downwards like this first. With this open, we're going to take the wheels around like so. Uh, take these pieces and again, I don't 100% know where they're supposed to be. I think right there works. Again, if you do know, please, please feel free to let me know. We're going to go ahead and push the fists back in down here. From here, this kind of throws me off a little. Uh, let's get this open and get the wheel out of the way. You kind of have to know where things are supposed to be in their end result. Because it does take twisting things around a little. So we do know that in its end result, this is going to kind of end up being an air filter. So you kind of work it into position and then I find just kinda getting the elbow and arm into the proper position along the way. So it should be kinda squared up like that. So we're gonna go ahead and do it 
for this side. Again, you do get that little bit of resistance here. And then flip it around. And then kind of carefully work everything into place. And I just realized that my hand did not get slotted in properly. Let me just fix that. I didn't actually realize I said that the um, fingers were all together. They're not the pinky finger or pointer finger. Jeez, I can't even say my fingers right now. The pointer finger is actually separate from the rest of the hand. So you can, the nice thing is you can actually open up the hood to kind of figure out if things are going the right way for you. There we go. I think we do want the two elbow pads in place and that should end up making our little like air filters there. With that in place, I do like to go and get these in place right now, the uh, fenders, like so. With that all in place, we can actually start tucking the head back down and in. And again, most of the head's gonna be covered by this little engine piece up there. So we got that, we know that that looks good. We'll keep the seats all the way open and flipped up like that. Open, flipped up, bring it around. And then this piece is gonna tuck in here because that's gonna be used to clip it. So everything on the front is fine. These should end up dropping in here when we're ready. So we'll go down to our feet now, which is where the experiment begins. So once again, right from the beginning, let's figure out which way these guys rotate and rotate the leg or the feet back around uh, and being careful not to stress anything out because we don't want that certainly. From here open this side panel. Now this is easy to forget so I always fold that in right away. Bring it up, fold that in. Take this back piece, open this on up as far as you can. There you go. From here, is it gonna work? We're gonna pull this wheel piece out and kinda secure that in place. Then we're gonna pull that out, bring that in place. This folds up and down. Oh my goodness, I think we actually can keep the guns in there. Um, that is really cool if they engineered that. Bring that down. And like so. And then fold this in. Yep, you totally can. That is awesome. I am really excited about that. Um, because that's every single accessory you really could care about is on there. Oh, and I forgot to show the key. I am so sorry. Um, he has this little hook here on his back that comes out and you can hang the key from it. I am so sorry I forgot to show that. Uh, not a huge thing, but it's a cool little thing that they added. So with that in place, we're going to go ahead and um, bring out this piece here. Uh, this little joint there just to give us the maximum space to work with here. Untab this black piece, which I had already done, and we can go ahead and open this back up. Again, if you want to, take that out. Um, it may help you a little bit. Bring all this stuff back in place and kind of close the rear of the car. Now, this can be a little tricky because it's on a double joint and you may not have noticed it, when you swiveled it around but you want to make sure you get that upper like box and then the lower one and then your seat should flip on through and it's real hard to get the head headrest out without one of the like spudgers or something else to kind of get in there you can kind of grip the top here but it's a little bit it is a little bit tough so just be aware 
So with that in place, uh, this can rotate up and just make sure the gray piece is within that back portion there. We'll go ahead and open this and there is a specific kind of slotting to this back tire to kind of bring it together. It's a not a squeeze peg but a uh, like a trapezoid type peg. So bring that in place. Again, same thing for this side. Open this on up. Bring this around. In this case, I do take this out. Bring this gun around. Open this up. Swivel this gas tank. Gas can, I guess, is actually more appropriate. Bring the seat here. Make sure that that clears all that. And again, watch for that inner piece to make sure it rotates because it can hold things up. That should clear most of the seat, which you can now bring up. Bring this piece again, making sure the gray piece clears that back section. And all this kind of covers on down. Once again, difficult to get out. Headrest. Kind of fix this. And you bring this together and use the tire side to kind of be one of the securing means for the two legs and then also at the same time and again let's take the tire off just so you can see it kind of puzzle pieces in here while also locking into the back there. So from here we're going to take this cannon piece and it can be a little difficult to get down there um, but it should end up fitting between the two legs and coming out to the bottom there and then you clip the two legs together with uh, what kind of is the shift area. Uh, it'll tab in there. So once you have this pegged in and if you're having trouble make sure that underneath kind of looks like this. It does take a little bit of doing just because this gun um, the way it's on that armature does have this tendency to kind of split the legs apart a little. But once you have it there you should be able to take these pieces in and they kind of secure to these parts on the seat here to give you even more extra stability and then with the steering wheel out of the way the seats come down and they peg onto the legs to even sure it up a little bit more um, so once you have it there everything should look good you can kind of come back here again I knocked that piece out but a little bit of pushing on some of the bottom portions here and making sure everything is properly clipped in and it's all kind of shored up. And I forgot to show that you can put the windshield down frontwards if you want to uh, like the real Jeep can do. And it's a little bit of a tricky dance because you do have with these pieces, you know, it's not this perfect like secure fit on these pieces here. So you just, just be aware of that. Um, and it, it all kind of stems on the rotation of this, the alignment of these, uh, all that stuff kind of ends up needing to be completely perfect to ensure that it's gonna lock into place. But once you have it, go ahead. If you did take off your wheel, go ahead and tab that onto the back. Unfold your gun here. And it does have a particular way to plug in big, big hole on the bottom, or big portion of the hole on one side it goes forward. And there you go. Uh, the instructions kind of show it like this. I, I prefer to just have it facing forward because I just think it's more visually interesting. So there you go. There's Hound in his Jeep mode. We'll put the mirrors up because someone's screaming you didn't do that. Um, I like him. I think he's cool. He is, at first glance, I didn't like him as much as he's growing on me. He's very much the same as that MP Bumblebee to me. Um, I still think I prefer my fan's toys hound, um, or detective, whatever his name was, I can't remember. 
But I do like this guy a lot, and he is fun to mess with, and uh, I love all the ways that, you know, this built, being built in is a little unsightly, but storing the guns in there, you know, being able to store the gas can, the wheel, in this way, like, come on. Like, that's, that's really cool and well engineered. So, overall, I think that this guy is neat. Uh, I like him. I don't know. It's kind of up to you if you feel like he needs to replace your fan's toys hound or if your fan's toys hound is going to work for your intended purpose. And that's all a subjective thing. So this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. And I'll see you next time.